Handheld okay? Yeah, is it on? You can hear? You can do, yeah. This is probably about where I would speak from. Is that going to sounding okay? Do you have enough volume? Do I need to keep yabbering on? How's that? Is that getting any louder? That right, keep trying. Give it as loud as you can. Oh, it's getting louder in the room now. It's getting, getting echoey in here. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah? Good and loud, right, okay, good. So, uh, oh gosh, I'm on already. I'm on one, but I think you worked that one out. I'll put myself back to mute.
good evening. I'm starting to recognise you, not by your faces, but by many of you, by the masks you're wearing. I'm getting to know your masks a little better. Anyway, it's really good to see you tonight. Welcome. Thank you for coming to all of those of you who are here. And for all of those of you who are joining us online, it's really good to have you with us as well. So welcome, whether you're physically here or with us in spirit watching from home, you're very welcome indeed. We're just going to pray as um, we begin. Um, a verse I was reading the other day, Hebrews uh, chapter 13, is actually quoting from the Old Testament where God says to his people, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Um, to some of us, perhaps this year has been incredibly tough, very isolating, extremely challenging, very wearing and tiring. And as we look ahead, we're not sure when it's all going to change back. So these are tough times, but God isn't surprised. If you look throughout Christian history, God has worked in the most amazing times of hardship and loneliness, separation, persecution, just to name but a few. And Christians have testified he never leaves, he is always there. And so it's to a God who is present that we pray now. Holy Spirit, present with us now. As we come to our annual meeting, we look back at all the things that have happened. We consider where we are today. And trusting in you, we want to look forward. So as we do part of that process tonight, by hearing the reports and making votes and all the rest of it, help us to be guided by you and reassured that you will never leave us or forsake us. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, we're going to get straight on with the uh, meeting. I'm very aware that wearing masks is not the most pleasant thing to do. So we're going to try and take this meeting, for those of us here, at a decent, respectable pace. <laughs> um, so, first of all, um, we come to the separate meeting called the Vestry Meeting, which was held last year. I'm just going to read out the minutes for that very briefly, where we elect the church wardens. <clears throat> there was no objection to Chris Cole continuing as warden. Doug proposed, seconded to be confirmed. Uh, Pam Smith proposed a new church warden, Beverly Hall. Nikki Baldwin seconded, and that was all accepted. Um, this year, as I'm sure you know, um, Bev, delighted to say, is staying on for her, her term, so to speak. And uh, Chris Cole is stepping down. Um, I'm going to be thanking Chris at a sep on a separate occasion but we all know what Chris is like. We all know his wisdom, his faithfulness, actually his ability to steady what can be a bit of a turbulent ship. Chris is invaluable. Um, ever since I've been here, and I certainly speak on behalf of my predecessor, we have really, really valued your companionship and support and prayerfulness. So Chris, thank you, but we'll be thanking you a bit more properly in time to come. But as I just mentioned, uh, Bev, has, we're delighted to say, uh, has applied again. And Angie Girling has also applied. So I'm delighted to accept um, both of those. Have you got the proposers there, Val? You may not on the bit of paper. If it's not obvious, don't worry too much. Doug Halstead, yeah. Brilliant. And that was for? Wonderful. If we've got Bev's there. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you to all three. David. Yeah, sure. So, um, shall I just say that one? Um, so it was um, um, Bev was Doug Halstead and Jill Hallett. <laughs> right. And, um, Angie was Jill Hallett. 
Halstead. Great, I've got them mixed up the wrong way. Brilliant. Did the microphone here? Yes, I, 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 sorry. Did you, did you want to, do you want that one again? Yeah, great. So um, let's get this right. Um, Angie's being proposed by Doug Halstead and Jill Hallett. And Bev, I've already forgotten, is being proposed by Gordon Blackman. Gordon Blackman and Pat Oldshaw. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. No, I actually appreciate that. Thanks, Chris. Um, good. So um, we're now on to the annual meeting now. So, Val, if you'd like to give us the apologies, I think you better go up or, yeah. <clears throat> Is this, oh yeah, it's turned on, okay. Um, Helen and Derek Brain, Jeff and Carol Morgan, Angie Gerling, Anne and Martin Jones, Jill Hallett, John Burkett, Ray Pilgrim and Heather Thompson. Thomas, sorry. Thomas. Brilliant. Thank you, Val, very much. Um, you should, most of you have got copies um, of last year's minutes. I think Phil emailed those out. So um, I don't think we've got time to go through them in detail and have them read out. I'm hoping you've had time to study them before this evening um, and hopefully ready to confirm they are a um, a correct record of what happened last year or to suggest any corrections. So I'm hoping to get this one through fairly promptly. So for those who have managed to read them, um, would someone like to, oh, well, have we got any corrections? Should ask that first. Nothing you're aware of? Okay, someone who's managed to read them to propose Bev. Uh, someone to second that. Oh, just sneaking in was Hillary. Um, are we all happy with that? No objections? So I've got a lot of nodding and masked faces. I'm going to have to get used to this. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Brilliant. Okay. We're going to now go on to our main reports. Um, just a health thing to say that if you're taller or shorter, Chris Cole will adjust the mic because he's touched it. So please try not to adjust the mic yourself. Chris will jump up and sort that out for you. I'll try and give you, for those of you who brought copies of this, um, and I think there's one or two paper copies at the back if you need one, the page number on which the report is. So hopefully we can navigate those. And I know what it's like, and I know I'm the lucky one because I'm not wearing a mask at the moment, but I do appreciate what it's like wearing masks. So. On the basis we're going to try and get through the meeting as quickly as reasonably possible. Um, those of you giving the reports, I think we've got the full written report for you. Hopefully you've had a chance to read that. So if you can just bring the highlights, that would really help um, enormously. So with that, I think back to Val for PCC review. So firstly, I would like to thank Andrew Boardman for the guidance and advice he's given me as I took over the role of PC Secretary earlier this summer. Um, it had been planned for me to take over at the APCM in April, but as that was postponed, I've taken over taking PCC meeting minutes July, September and November 2019 and January 2020. Um, the meeting scheduled for March was cancelled due to the pandemic and in addition we've held three virtual meetings via Zoom in May, July and September and there have also been two extraordinary meetings to discuss the reopening of church following the relaxation of lockdown. Thank you. I think those of us on the PCC are starting to get used to Zoom. Um, interesting experience, I suspect most of you know from your various walks of life, but it's jolly useful actually to be able to do it that way. Um, Phil. Only for a moment, yeah. Sadly, this is a very short report for me. 
Um, the uh, electoral roll numbers, of course, uh, dropped after a full revision uh, last year to 159. Um, Hayley Bridges, uh, of course, we know moved away, and sadly, the other four mentioned in the reports uh, sadly passed away. Um, but we've added Sue Britton and Martin Raymond. Uh, we may have added others, you know, if we hadn't been in this sort of lockdown situation. So the number, as you can see now, is 156. Here ended the report. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Uh, great. Um, Warden's Fabric. Well, um, hopefully anyone who's interested in these things has had an opportunity to, um, to look through the report which was given. So I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Just a couple of quick points I will mention. Uh, about a year ago now, we had our five-yearly, our quinquennial inspection carried out. Um, fortunately, on this occasion, there wasn't anything that's, that's been spotted that's going to worry, worry us seriously over that five-year period. There are jobs inevitably. Some of them have been uh, taken care of and others still need to be taken care of, but nothing that is uh, anything like the job we had with the Spire before that. Um, the only other thing I was going to briefly mention is that we were in the process, really, of the end of last year, early this year it was, of actually forming a fabric committee, which is something we haven't had before in the church. Um, but the, the people are together and willing to get involved in that. And uh, first meeting was stopped because of the uh, pandemic. But we will, um, we will have a fabric committee going forward, which will be a, a big support to the wardens, I believe. Um, so uh, does anyone have any questions at all? It's officially, it's the legal, it's not a legal document, it is a record of the land. Sorry, the question was, um, what is a terrier? And it is required, apart from being a little dog, yeah, it is a requirement um, for all Anglican churches that they have this thing called a terrier and a logbook, an inventory. Uh, two of them are fairly self-explanatory. The inventory is a record of all the movable property of the church. The log book is a record of all the repair and maintenance work carried out on church buildings. And the terrier is a record of the lands that the church possesses or the church sits on, really, basically. Just a record of the lands and buildings. So ours just is a map. And that's about it. Um, and I think as wardens and vicar, we'd like to thank the maintenance team for all the stuff they've done. A lot of it behind the scenes, a lot of it you know, during weekdays when a, a number of us aren't around, but we're really grateful for the team for really helping us enormously with that. It's been good. Yeah, I, mean, I would just like to finish by, by saying a big thank you, really, because it's been my privilege to be warden of this church for the last four and a half years now. <coughs> um, and I couldn't do it without the, the support and encouragement um, and help assistance that, that the congregation offers so it has been absolutely brilliant thank you very much for that i'm sure you'll continue to give that to bev and angie as they move forward and um yeah i i wish them god's blessing in their role thank you great thank you chris very much okay good we're trotting through them um david's up next on finance I'm looking forward to a good half an hour out of my mask. So uh, <laughs> <coughs> I'll try and speak a little bit faster than I was going to. Um, I must commence by thanking Helen Brain for the helpful way in which she handled the, the handover of the treasurer role and that she was available throughout the end of 2019 and the start of 2020. I really appreciated her help there and it made the transition work really well. If we could have the next slide, please. Thank you. The 2019 accounts have been independently examined and approved by the PCC. 
Helen has provided a report on this and that can be found in your packs. Once I knew that I was going to take on the role, I had a desire to introduce new ways of enabling giving and payments using technology in church and on the web. This was not with a prophetic view of a forthcoming pandemic, <laughs> but it turned out to be very timely. Mm -hmm. By the time lockdown hit, we had introduced a contactless card reader for donations and another for event payments online. The online side of things became invaluable throughout lockdown and was used to take payments for shopping for the scheme in which Christchurch shopped for people who were unable to leave their homes. We now have two card readers available in church each Sunday for donations. Lockdown brought the request of encouraging many of those who gave regularly through cash or checks to give direct through their bank to the church's bank. And I'm very grateful for the substantial number of people who made that change, which enabled us to maintain a steady income stream throughout the year. It also makes the treasurer's life much easier. Up to the end of August 2020, general fund income from all sources was 98% of budget, close to the overall planned income, but not made up in quite the way we had expected. For example, there was no income from the open garden scheme, but there was lots of money that had come in through the COVID shopping scheme. You can see the breakdown on page 24. It's labelled A1, accounts one of the 2020 accounts. We were very fortunate that the preschool was able to continue paying their rent throughout lockdown as they were still receiving funding. Importantly, income from giving was 92% of the budgeted amount. I would expect Give it giving income to be about £9,500 below budget by the end of the year if the current pattern continues. Up to the end of August 2020, general fund expenditure was 100% of budget. But, as with income, it was constituted in some unexpected ways. Covid has seen us spending on some unplanned things, particularly in creating and maintaining an effective, legal, expanded online presence. The kit for streaming services has cost below £500, and the licenses that allow us to use YouTube fully and to meet copyright laws have cost just over £1,000. Most of that we have been paying each year anyway to help us or to allow us to print and display song words in church. We have been very fortunate to receive grant funding from ROC, redeeming our communities, to help us with our technology improvements. In total, we have received over £1,500 from ROC. Some of this has helped kit out Tom so that he can film, edit and compile the weekly services and film the daily prayers that I know so many people appreciate. We have also received grants from the Job Retention Scheme, known as furlough, amounting to £670. Our largest expenditure item remains the parish share that we pay to the Diocese of Bath and Wells. I am pleased to say we have been able to continue to pay this in full, £7,475 each month, throughout the pandemic, a decision that was agreed by the PCC and I think a bit of a surprise to Bath and Wells. We're not expecting any other large unbudgeted expenditure, and I hope that our final expenditure figure will be below the budgeted figure for the year. We continue to support some mission work each month, with regular payments being made to Andy Page, Christians Against Poverty, InterServe, which is Lucy in Asia, Wycliffe Bible Translation, the Morrisseys, Project Pegasa, which is the Potters, CETA, and Locking Deanery, and the amounts are on screen. At the start of 2020, the church held funds amounting to £71,000, and at the end of August, these funds were £68,000, £18,000 unrestricted, and the rest either designated or restricted. Full details of those funds can be found on the page labelled F1. It's page 26 in the pack. 
in a year in which many churches have faced major financial hardships and loss of substantial letting income, we have been very blessed to be in the position in which we find ourselves. Finances are not stopping us engaging in new ministry areas, for example, the online services and the daily prayers, maintaining our premises, paying our workers, paying our bills, or meeting our other financial commitments. That's the end of that report. I have had one question submitted in advance, and that was asking about the Give As You Live scheme, sometimes known as Every Click, where some people can do their shopping online and a portion comes to Christchurch. In 2019, that raised £223, and so far in 2020, that has raised £86. I think probably I share with David a, 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 a thankfulness that we're able to pay our parish share. Um, I've no idea what the diocesan finances are like, but my guess is they're none too pretty after the pandemic of this year. So I feel really proud actually that we're able to maintain because that money will be very badly needed. So good on us actually and thank the Lord we've been able to do it. I'm gonna be thanking David along with one or two others in a moment but David thank you very much it might be got a bit more of a detailed question which means David just needs to sit down and talk you through things I think at any stage please feel free to ask David to do that in a socially distant manner of course or via email or via email and David's more than willing yeah. to reply thank you ever right. so much thank you so we're on to item seven um the proposed the, I'd like to propose Again, we use Mark Summers. He's audited our accounts for many years, apart from a small gap. Um, and we're really grateful to him. He does a good job. So I'd like to propose we uh, appoint him, because this is a bit more formal. We need a, um, a seconder for that. Thank you, Angeline. Are we all happy with that? Yeah, good, no objections? Great, thank you, good. Wonderful. Um, Hayden. <clears throat> you get your moment of release, Hayden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hot under there. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so the Locking Deanery Synod Report 2020. You have seen my written report on page 30 of the information packs, so here are a few highlights for this evening. The diocesan vision in response to God's immense love for us as we seek to be God's people living and telling the story of Jesus. The first meeting of the year was held at St Andrew's Bourneville. The welcome was given by Reverend Tim Erridge, who introduced Nikki Pybus pioneer minister of Bourneville. She said she had come to the, from pioneer ministry in Portsmouth Diocese. She doesn't do church, preferring to do worship in nature and enjoys Celtic Christianity. Tom Yocomoni, the area dean, then reported that he had a really positive meeting review with Western College chaplaincy. Temporary placements were possible in the college. Reverend Julie Burkett's work had been rewarded the goal was to have a chaplain in each college site. Our second meeting took place at St Barnabas in February 2020. Tom reported on Q Stoke, Milton and World consultation with Reverend Canon Julie Fleming and Reverend Jeff Eels moving on. An opportunity had arisen to consult if any useful changes could be available. The consultation started in July concluded in a report being given by the Archdeacon Adrian at the end of January. Six churches, including recently closed Meadvale, were involved in the consultation. At its last meeting in January, the Deanery Mission and Pastoral Group had endorsed the report a recommendation which had quite a substantial implications. It included the dissolving of the World Team Ministry and changing the parish boundaries it would provide the opportunity for each church to focus on its own missional strategy, tailored to its surrounding community. 
there will be a need to reassess the parish share for the churches affected and relicensing of clergy as an interim measure. The Dean Reaction Team updates was DAT1, Shared Ministry, Prayer and Worship. The Dean Service of Light offered a big thank you to St Peter's Wardens and for their hosting the event and for Christchurch Prayer and Ministry for their support at the service. There had been around 110 people attending the service. The next Deanery Service of Light has been announced and has been booked in January 2021 and it's here at Christchurch. Tom invited Gary Hall to come forward to speak about Mead Vale's development, which we will have around 1,500 houses. Gary said there could be 250k grant available from the Methodist General Funds for the pioneer ministry on the estate. Tom went to speak about the Deanery Mission and Action Plan, introducing a new vision and Mission Action Plan Summary for 2020, 2023. Please note, you should all have a copy of this in your information packs. This concludes the Deanery Synod Report for 2019-2020. Thank you. to me. I'm, I'm certain we'll be open. Yep. Oh, all right, okay. Yes, tell the vicar. <laughs> it's not the first time I've heard I, I am hosting, but I'm sure we can work on that, Hayden. But um, yeah. Uh, good. Um, thank you. Deanery is becoming increasingly important strategically in the work of the diocese. So thank you very much to the reps. But I think in particular, Hayden, does a, a lot of extra work, not just as a, you know, as a rep. So we thank you for some good stuff you're doing. Um, and once again, most of which most of us don't see. Those of us on the PCC get to hear a bit more. But you might be, if you, particularly if you're not on the PCC, you want to tap Hayden on the shoulder in a socially distant way and, um, and just ask him what's going on. Because actually I think you'll get a reply full of enthusiasm and mission and discipleship. It's, it's good stuff. So thank you, Hayden, for your involvement there. We now come to elect Deanery Synod reps. Um, so um, we have three, vacant, three vacancies. Um, Hayden, because he is part of Deanery Synod, is all automatically on, if you see what I mean. He's not elected uh, through us. Um, so far, we've only had one applicant, which is John Burkett, who's been on before, so he's happy to continue. But we do have two vacancies. Um, as I said, it's important work, and it's the sort of thing that might suit one or two people. So if anyone's interested, um, please have a word with particularly myself or Hayden um, and let us know. Or if you can think of someone you might want to suggest to them, they make some inquiries. So I think we'll hold the two vacancies, but please do let us know if um, anyone would like to apply. Otherwise, I think we'll declare John Burkett back on the team. Thank you. Great. And then um, on to PCC now. And we have five vacancies, which is inevitably from time to time it's a bit bumpy. Uh, we try and have roughly the same vacancies each year, but inevitably they bunch together. So you'll see our nominees, in fact you can see them, um, are up here. And also pleased to say we have five nominations for five vacancies, which fits perfectly. So, um, five really good people, so thank you. And unless anyone else wants to apply at the last moment, then I'm delighted to declare they are elected. So thank you to all of them. Some of them are returners, and we welcome you with your experience. Um, one or two are new to it, so it's really good to have you on board. Thank you ever so much. Great, okay, um, moving on now to Nikki, FYCM. Good evening. Good evening to those of you at home. Thank 
you, Chris. Adjust it for the short people in the building. Thank you. You'll be thrilled to know this is not my usual epic report. Um, so you've had the opportunity to read the Family, Youth and Children's Ministry Team report, um, which is on page 35. That's where it starts, anyway. It's quite a long one, as usual, um, in a good way. Um, so, as you know, government restrictions mean that our ministry is going to look quite different uh, for some time yet. So I'm just going to update you on a few areas. Uh, for now, I will continue to run the weekly Facebook Live toddler group sessions, and I've just begun to offer craft packs to the families to enable them to join in uh, with the craft that I make each session. Uh, and these are placed in the church entrance foyer, and the parents are asked to come and collect one during office opening hours. Having looked into the various regulations and guidelines gover governing children meeting together outside of school, we've decided that it's still not possible to run jam club safely at the moment. We'll continue to provide an online club, but this will be going out monthly rather than weekly. We've planned three between now and Christmas, and we'll review it again before next year. To give us a better idea of how many children are watching and to give us more flexibility in the things we can do with them, we've asked parents to register their child in order to receive a hand-delivered pack of materials. And currently we have 13 children registered. Um, the first uh, Jam Club online goes live tomorrow at 3.30. Tune in. Um, we've explained that uh, we were struggling to run youth church um, in our report and again due to the restrictions we've had to find new ways of supporting and discipling our families, children and young people. We created the church at home packs which although they were initially created for families and children they've been developed and now include a study section and they're available for all ages to use. They contain a variety of ways in which you can explore the Bible teaching from the Sunday service further, and you can access the packs by clicking on the notes section underneath each Sunday service on our website. And we'd encourage you all to have a look. Um, and I do know that some life groups, including my own, um, are enjoying the study sections. We've been in touch with our families regularly and I'm working on creating a group for parents and children to attend each week so that they can see each other and interact, but also so that we can build on the teaching that we receive on Sundays and make good use of the church at home packs. It's been a huge concern of ours that with Haley leaving and difficulties in securing new leaders for our groups, that our young people would be left without any pastoral care and support. We are working on that. Tom and others are planning and will do what they can, bearing in mind restrictions, to ensure our young people are cared for and able to engage. We're continually reviewing what we're doing and able to do. God has been so faithful throughout this time and we are so thankful for the technology that has enabled us to stay in touch and continue this ministry, as well as the blessing of seeing our family's faith grow and deepen through the use of the church at home packs. Thank you. Any questions for Nikki at all? Okay, thank you, Nikki and Angeline, for your work on this. Really grateful. Thank you. Um, okay, um, sorry, when Val's had a chance to make some notes on that, we're going to go on to the safeguarding report, which I think Val's going to read. But don't rush, Val, when you're ready.
the safeguarding report has been um, put together by Anne Jones. Um, the last year seems to have been a very strange one with the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on our church activities as well as our daily lives. One of the ongoing aspects of the job is to do new DBS checks and renewals. From the last APCM in April 2019 until April 20, when we should have had this year's APCM, Anne has done 24 DBS checks for Christchurch and three for Emmanuel. She's also done a few other churches as their safeguarding officer was not available and some ID verifications for clergy and readers. There have been a few cases where church members haven't renewed as they are no longer volunteering in a role that needs a current DBS check and some where people are waiting to see if their roles will be resumed in the future where groups have stopped meeting due to the COVID restrictions. All people involved in church activities with children and young people and vulnerable adults are required to have a DBS check even if they have one for work or for another organization. And these need to be renewed every five years. If you have a church DBS certificate, Anne will contact you a couple of months before the renewal date to allow plenty of time to do it. If you would like to know when your renewal is due, please contact Anne. People who hold a church DBS certificate are expected to do safeguarding training, which should be renewed every three years. The diocese appointed a new safeguarding trainer, Suzanne Disney, early in 2020, and we had booked her to do a foundation C1 training on the 23rd of March in Christchurch for both churches but this was canceled at the beginning of the pandemic. Suzanne reassured Anne that as soon as she could offer face-to-face -face trainings, Christchurch and Emmanuel would be at the top of the list to book a new date. However, it states on the diocesan website that there will be, sorry, that there will not be any face-to-face -face trainings for the foreseeable future. The advice from the diocese is that people should do the basic awareness, CO, and the foundation, C1 courses online by following the links on the diocese website. And then let Anne know when you have done it so that she can record the date. The specialist courses, including domestic abuse awareness and safer recru recruitment, are currently on hold and are in the process of being developed. <coughs> Leadership courses, formerly C2 and above, are being offered by Zoom or Teams, and clergy are prioritized at the moment. We are living in dif difficult times, but Anne encourages you to access the online training if possible, if you know it is over three years since you did it, and you haven't done it before, sorry, or you haven't done it before. Please contact Anne if you have any queries. Thank you. It's probably also worth mentioning that um, not just for those working with children, but I think the C0 course is available for anybody in the congregation. It's, it's interesting and it's something, frankly, we all need to know whether or not we're directly involved um, with young people of vulnerable adults' work. So I'd recommend it to all of you. I forget how long it takes, but it's really not that long. Go on to the Dalsison website for safeguarding and you should be able to find something. Um, Chris, I wonder if I'm on this mic, would you mind moving the stand, just in case the vicar starts waving his hands around, which is not really like me, but you never know. Um, it is me, isn't it? Yeah. A, a couple of comments about um, last year, which <laughs> seems ages ago now, doesn't it? Um, first of all, um, Alpha is steadily going on. We, each year, we have a lovely clutch of people, and um, little by little, they're getting into the church congregation. Not everybody does the whole course, not everybody stays around, but a significant number do go through, and we had the same this year. I know from the 2019 course, 
uh, Joe is heading up a life group made up of folk who've come from the Alpha course. Um, in my experience, they're all convinced they know nothing and are terrified of the rest of us because they think we all know everything. I think letting them into a secret, <laughs> they know a little more than we do. No, they know a little more than they think they do, and we don't know everything. But anyway, that integration is happening, and we had another one this year which went really well. Um, I'm planning in some shape or form to have one after Christmas as part of a sort of regular cycle. How we do it, I'm not quite sure, but um, we'll work that one out. Uh, Nikki touched on the family packs, and one initiative that was taken last year was to coordinate the teaching between what's happening here when we hear sermons and what's happening in the youth, children and youths area so that the same passages are being looked at. Now that's been brilliant because it's meant particularly families have been looking at the same material and it's sparked off some really quite interesting discussions. So I'm very grateful. It's quite a lot of work and not every passage is easy to translate into youth church material. I'm getting some knowing looks from my two colleagues. But we're really grateful for a considerable amount of work that's gone into that. Whilst we're talking about um, children and families, um, we just want to thank Hayley. She was absolutely wonderful. And I think one of the lovely things about Hayley was she didn't just come here for the children or come here for the youth. She was part of us. And many of us will have known her and loved her. And it was real sorrow, actually, we saw her go. She's got a great job up in Bristol, and we really are very, very um, pleased for her. In terms of keeping the work going, the PCC and the FYCM group have agreed that we're going to take on someone else, but we're refocusing our work on the children side of things. Um, and we then the pandemic hit, and so exactly what that person, what the needs are, is still up in the air, because as you'll appreciate, the goalposts are moving all the time. But in due course, um, we believe we've got the funding and we will be looking for the right person, whatever the right person looks like, to work alongside Nikki. Talking about new appointments, last year, of course, it was great to have Angeline on board as our musical director. Angeline will be the first to say we work as a team um, with other people, but nonetheless, thank you very much to all that you've um, put into that area. And it sounds ages ago now, but also you remember last year, we had a revamp of our church website. Um, and I'm going to talk a bit about the website and online in a bit. But I want to thank um, Becca Clark in particular. You won't be surprised to hear out of the two of us, she's by far the more technically driven. Um, and she was absolutely brilliant, both technically and just adding inspiration to getting it done. The website, before the pandemic, was becoming a really, really important part of our ministry. Um, I think I've said before, it's most likely people will first meet us, not by coming in those doors, but by finding us on a website and dipping in and seeing what we're like. So our website is effectively one of our front doors into church and arguably one of the most important so we're very very grateful that work was developed um, this year of course as well as Haley, we said goodbye to Becca um, incredibly grateful for her and she was a fantastic colleague for me and I know many of you have enormously benefited from her ministry and delighted to say for her too she's got a great job in Woking which seems to suit her really well so that's um, gone brilliantly. Um, and talking of curates, I suspect most of you know, we're looking forward to welcoming Larissa Trust next summer after her ordination to be joining us here as curate. Um, she's doing her second year of her training at Serum College in Salisbury at the moment. So your prayers for her, not least because she'll be joining the likes of us, but just as she wrestles with theological training and the inevitable essays and all the rest of it but really excited about that. Um, although, in theory, this meeting is to look at the events of last year, it would almost be totally meaningless without commenting on what has happened this year. Um, I wrote in the service book, we've got a book, you've probably seen it on the vestry desk, 
which records all the services that have ever happened in this church. In fact, I flicked back through them and found out the service that was held on the day I was born and what passage was preached. It still sticks in my mind. Ever since this church was founded, it has never stopped holding services until March of this year. So it really struck me how very, very significant the pandemic has been. As Christians, there is always something for us to do. And as well as pray, one of the first things we did was we got involved with an organisation called ROC that Chris mentioned earlier, Redeeming Our Communities, which brilliantly had just come together, I think, in the months before. And so come the pandemic, it was in a very good place to offer care and help for many in our community. We became, along with a few other churches, what was known as a hub church. And through that, a number of you will have done deliveries of shopping, prescriptions, and phoning up people who aren't stuck on by themselves. It was a fantastic example of just caring for people in trouble, as Christ would have done. Um, Chris Cole, in particular, headed it up, but I know a number of you were involved in that, or were just involved in caring for each other. And I know a number of you have been very good about phoning around, keeping tabs with people, doing deliveries where needed, or bits and pieces. Thank you. It has shown the Christian care we've had for each one of our own, and I'm really, really grateful for it. And actually very proud to be part of a church that's just got stuck in, and for each of us done what is appropriate for us, um, given how much shielding or whatever we needed to do. The church was closed for that time, but the church was still active. And our online services really were born. Um, I found out from the Archbishop the church is closed on the Tuesday, and by Sunday we produced an online service, which <laughs> I don't know how on earth we did it, but we did it. Um, online is going to be here to stay. Um, even when, well, we're going back, as you probably know, to 10.30 services. Those services will be broadcast, what's called live streaming, and thank you for the team that's been getting that together. But there'll always be a online service from here on in, I hope, forever. Because even come when things return to something a bit more stable, we've realised there are quite a few people who click in to see what we're like. It's interesting, a lot of people have been saying around the country that although some of the well-known churches have had a lot of people sign up for them, like Holy Trinity, Brompton, or All Souls Langham Place, etc., when it comes to finding out about church, most people have gone to their local church to see what's going on. And that's us. We've had a lot of clicks on our website, and a number of whom for people we've probably never met. So the online dimension, I hope, will be here to stay. Um, talking of which, daily prayers seem to have gone well as well. I know a number of you um, um, listen to them, and that's brilliant. There are other things you could be doing. You don't have to do daily prayers, but some form of regular prayer and Bible study is absolutely fantastic. Um, I plan to keep those going as long as there's a reasonable number clicking in. At the moment, we have far more than a reasonable number, so I have got a feeling I'm going to be doing them for ages. So, but anyway, I'm getting some help from time to time for others, and I'm very grateful for that. One of the most important things that's been guiding us during this time of the pandemic is being as united as we can as a congregation, aware that some of us can come to church and some of us can't. And that's really guided our thinking over these last few months. You'll be aware we've done this transitional service before we go back to the 1030s. And the idea has been to include as many people as possible by saying that the, so to speak, anchor service is online. Obviously, come the 1030s, etc., a number of us will be able to attend church, but a very significant number of us won't be actually coming to church every week. And we want you to feel just as welcome as anybody else. So a lot of work will be going on to making it a good service to receive online, as well as those of us who are physically present. It's been a very busy time, as you can probably imagine. 
and in times a very challenging time. Um, an awful lot of you have really, really stepped up and that's been a huge encouragement to me, watching you get stuck into things. Um, personally, I'm grateful there are three people in particular I think I'd just like to mention. Um, Chris Cole, as I mentioned, for his work with Redeeming Our Communities and has always been a fantastic wingman, just helping me with stuff and being a prayerful, wise man. Really grateful to Chris. Also, David White, as I mentioned earlier, David has transformed the finance. We've really moved forward in terms of our giving online, and that happened at just the right time. But David's also been very busy on the technical side, and I'm extremely grateful for all the work that he's done there. And on the technical side as well, I'd say Terry Bailey, actually, he's been brilliant as well. Um, he's hiding, I think, behind one of the cabinets. Yep, there he is. Um, and we're working hard on the online services. Without any of those three, and without a whole load of the rest of you, I would be sunk. So I'm extremely grateful for all the help and advice and encouragement um, I get. And it's lovely to work together as a team. As well as seeing one or two areas blossom, like our online and our daily prayers, the truth is a lot of our ministry has just stopped. Um, ladies Together, uh, the men's group, uh, Energize group, uh, Meeting Point, Toddlers, just to name a few, there are many others. And that is really hard because so much of what we're about is actually relating to each other. Online is good, but it's not the same as having a cup of tea with someone, typically in this building. That is really tough, and I don't have anything clever to say about it, apart from it hurts. And I've spoken to many people on the phone who've been helping with those groups, and they have said how much they've missed them, let alone the people who've come to them and benefited from them. It's a hard time. Do keep them in your prayers, these people. Um, we're doing our best to find a way forward. But we have to say, it is a really tough time without many of those groups. What I would say is that, as I said at the beginning, God is still present and active. He is not surprised by this, um, and he is able to work within it. Much as I might stare at the diary and think, what on earth, so many things are not happening. The truth is, God is still at work, always has been, is, and always will be. And so I would suggest to all of us, whether we're physically here or watching on the telly, um, that actually the way forward is to do what we're doing, is to do our prayers every day, is to read our Bible every day, is to live God's love with those in our congregation and those outside our congregation. Just keep doing the basics, trusting in God day by day, and the ways will become clear. If I'm honest with you, it's a bit of old-fashioned advice, but it does not work, as you and I both know. We keep trusting, we keep loving, we keep praying, and God will show us the next step. Um, this is a lovely church to be part of. I'm really grateful to be here. Each one of you, as I look around at these masks, um, with eyes on top of them and glasses steaming up in some cases, um, I'm really grateful for your companionship, fellowship, prayers and support. And thank you for the very different roles each one of you have played. I'm really, really grateful for it. My thanks. Now come is um, any other business. We haven't had anything notified, but just checking there aren't anything. Uh, Christine, you might need uh, um, stand up, pause and take your mask off. Let's see if we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, um, so, uh, 
just in case you didn't hear, it's a question about the prayer chain. It seems to have gone a bit quiet recently. I think we can say this is still very much in operation. And if anyone has a concern, we've got the normal channels through uh, Sandra Crocker and Chris Cole. The one, both the actual ringing round one and the mobile one are still active. I wonder sometimes, if I can put it this way, like buses, things come in clumps and then there's a bit of a gap. But it's still very much there. Um, and do you get the prayer messages on your mobile? Um, I'm pretty sure, you know, that just, you know, you haven't changed your mobile or something. The moment the next one comes up, you should receive it. Um, but thank you for raising that. Um, okay. All right, 27, I've spoken for a fair bit. We're going to finish. Um, I'm going to ask you, yes, Chris wants to say something, and I'll close with the prayer. Um, I think Tom's been thanking an awful lot of people tonight um, and I think no, no, I'll take this thing off when I'm up here I forgot that before <laughs> yeah Tom's been thanking an awful lot of people and I think I would like can, can, we, can the meeting thank Tom because he's the leader of this church and it's Tom that has driven all that's been happening that is quite incredible he said it, it is amazing that we got a service online you know, the first week after lockdown, um, and we get morning prayers, and Tom's doing all of those. And I think we're really fortunate. We actually have a, a vicar that is very gifted in broadcasting. Um, <laughs> because it's not everybody that can just sit in front of a microphone or a camera and get it right and, and make it look so natural. And Tom does it brilliantly. So c can we record our thanks to Tom, because he's done a brilliant job. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Yes. That's kind. That is kind. Thank you. No, not at all. I think, um, um, as we were saying in the first few days, to get a human voice that you recognize, even if that human voice is your vicar, um, is just helpful. One thing that's been interesting for me, I've done fewer sermons, which tend to take a whole passage, and there's an enormous benefit in doing a little bit every day of breaking a passage down and doing this point today, Tuesday, you do something else. And so I've really enjoyed um, working through them, and it's just a, a little and often is by far the best way to grow as a Christian. But thank you for that. Appreciate it. As any good football manager would say, it's team effort. Yes, I've done my bit, but you've done your bit. And so let's keep going. And so mindful of that, can I ask us to stand? Um, I know we're all going to... I'm going to ask us to say the grace. We'll do it with our face masks on. But I'm just mindful, those of us here, and there'll be those of you online, if you'd like to say us as well, and we're going to say it to each other, whether each other means here in this building or you at home or wherever you are. But we're going to, I'm going to say a prayer and then we'll finish with the grace. Heavenly Father, thank you. You will never leave us or forsake us. You have been present and you are present within our church and in our lives. Help us to discern how best to follow you. But help us day by day to keep in touch with you, to walk in your ways, and to live out your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. And so masked up as most of us are, not me, I'm afraid. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you. God bless.